Paper clutter is one of those things that can get really stressful, especially when we don't quite know where to start with the dealing with old paper clutter or how to sort through new papers that are coming into our home. So I thought in today's video, I would share some quick tips and tricks for managing your papers. Hey, I'm Heather and on my channel, I love sharing tips for decluttering, minimizing and organizing your home. And for the month of January, I have started a little mini series on my channel called Havoc to Haven, where I'm taking you through a different space in your home each week and just sharing some tips and tricks for helping you manage those spaces. So in today's video, we're going to talk a little bit more about paper clutter and how we can manage it and keep it under control. So the first thing we'll talk about is having a system to manage our papers. So this will be what you want to have in place before you even go through any old stacks of paper. That way it's already ready to go for you to file anything that you come across and you won't have to wonder what to do with any of those papers. So I'll be honest, in our house, most of the time we don't really get a ton of mail we really don't get very many bills in the mail. I pretty much pay every single bill online besides maybe the one-off uh, medical bill or something like that. But for the most part, what's coming in is pretty minimal. And a part of the reason for that, I think, is because as soon as I do check the mail and bring it in, I immediately process it right then. But I realize that that's not the case for everyone and that's not always possible. Sometimes we have other things come up, we end up sticking it on, the edge of the counter or wherever and it ends up piling up. So if that's you, then I wanna share the little system that we just started using at our house to give you some ideas of how you might be able to use the same system to manage your papers. So like I mentioned in past videos, we are moving in about a month, so I didn't wanna do anything that was super permanent. I would actually prefer to have something on the wall that I could see so I don't forget. But in the meantime, what I am doing instead is just using this little magazine holder. And I'm just keeping it over in a little nook in our kitchen so that it doesn't add too much visual clutter, but it's still there, easily accessible, so I don't forget about it. So what is in my little basket here is these little file folders that I actually just got at the dollar spot at Target. And I have labeled them Heather to do, Jerry to do, that's my husband, to file, and then reference. So that's like if I have receipts or something that I'm not sure if I'm going to need later bills to pay and bills paid. So like I said, for us, we really don't get a lot of bills coming in, but I have those there just in case. And you can always change it up as you kind of get a better idea of what is coming into your house more often. And you can add those categories or take categories away. This little sack of file folders was like $3. So I won't be too upset if I have to change it up. I really like having a section for myself. If there is something that I come across that I can't take care of right that second, then I can go ahead and put it in my to-do folder so I can remember to go back and look at that later. And if you are someone who is really forgetful and you know you won't come back and look at it, especially if it's inside of a folder, then I would recommend even setting an alarm or putting a reminder on your phone for maybe a certain day or time during the week. And that could just be the time that you always check your little bin and look at any of those action items that you need to take care of. And then my to file folder is kind of the same thing. If there's something that comes in that I know I need to file or archive, maybe I'm taking care of something else right that minute, I can stick it in there and come back and check later and I'll be able to go ahead and put it where it goes. Like I said, reference, this is really great for like receipts. I don't know about you, but oftentimes I don't really know what to do with receipts especially if I bought something for someone else or maybe a clothing item that I'm not really sure if it's going to work out or if the quality is gonna last and maybe I, it will need to be returned, but I don't like receipts just laying around. This is perfect for that so I know exactly where they are and they have a date. So when I come back and I see it's been 30 days or more, I can go ahead and throw it away at that time. But the thing I really like about this system is it's really easy to see where everything is. Everything has a place, but it's not so detailed that it will stress me out or confuse me or make me think too hard about where to put things. It's more broad categories than like little finite details. All right, so next let's talk about how to deal with 
old papers that you already have that have been laying around for weeks, months, maybe even years, and you're not really sure how to go through and sort those old papers. So I actually grabbed a stack of some of my papers just from around the house. So I'm going to quickly go through that with you and kind of show you how I sort through that. I was going to use a stack of mail, but we didn't have any mail today. So, and normally when the mail comes in, I feel like most of it is just ads. So that ends up getting recycled. And I am not a coupon person, so I don't keep any physical coupons. If I want a coupon for something, I feel like most of the time I can find it online. It really helps to cut back on some of the paper clutter as well that's coming in. Let's see what's in this pile. So I have two Target receipts, and one of them is from over a month ago. So I was hanging on to that for a gift that I had bought for my sister in case it didn't work out. So I can go ahead and toss that one. And then this other one is just from a few days ago. So I'm gonna go ahead and put that in my reference folder. And then I have a notebook here that's actually used up and it's kind of full of notes for like videos and things like that. So I actually do want to hang on to this. So what I'm gonna do with this, since I'm not really wanting to put it away, I'm wanting it to be somewhere where I can grab it and reference it really easily. So I'm actually gonna put this in my reference folder as well. All right, and then I have a few magazines here. I was pregnant with my son and my sister was so sweet to get me this parents magazine subscription and what I normally do with magazines is I read them usually when I'm taking a bath or something like that. I'll save them for that occasion. Once I'm done with them then I just go ahead and toss them. So I know just scanning through this pile that I've already read a couple of these so I'm gonna go ahead and toss those and then the ones that I haven't read, I'm gonna go ahead and put those also in my reference folder so I can grab them whenever I am ready to just relax and look at a magazine, but they're not adding any stacks of paper clutter around my home. I guess it works out really well that my organizer is actually a magazine holder. All right, so let's talk about some specific categories that you can use to sort through old paper clutter. And I can't take credit for these, I actually, saw these from The Minimal Mom, so I'll link her video below. But I found them really helpful to give you a guideline for going through those old papers so you're not sitting there kind of wondering what to do. A little bit later in the video, I'm actually gonna show you how we went through a stack of my husband's old papers from like several years ago using these categories. So that'll give you kind of a better example. What I did is I just made these little cards and we use these to sort through those stacks of paper. The categories we used were action, and action is anything that needs to be processed, like a bill that needs to be paid. Just yesterday, I needed to request my son's birth certificate, so that was an action item for me that I would have put in this category. So this is anything um, that you need to take action on. Pretty self-explanatory. The next category, again, is reference. So we talked about reference. That would be something that you're still wanting to refer back to. Maybe you have some notes that you're still using. Maybe you have some receipts that you still want to hang on to. This is perfect for that. If you're sorting through old papers, just put them in this pile and then you can take that pile afterwards and put it back in your reference folder that you already created in your system. The next category that is really important, I think, to have is memory. So maybe you come across some old birthday cards, greeting cards, or maybe like a sweet note from your significant other, or um, maybe you have some kids' artwork that you really want to hold on to. This is the category for all of those things. You just put them in this pile. And then what you're gonna want to have in place that we'll talk about in another video is a box for each member of the family. So I've heard um, the minimal mom or cast from Clutterbro, I can't remember which one, calls it a memory bin. I've never really had like a specific name for them, but, but I have one for each a member of our household as well. One for my son, one for myself or any sentimental items that I'm holding on to. My husband, we are about to set one up for him. And then we have one that's for both of us that we use for like love notes, cards that we give each other, things from our wedding and stuff like that. So I think it's really important to have a box like that for each person in your family so that when you come across those items, you have a place to put them. And then it kind of gives you a limit of how much to hang on to. I think a quote from, I think was also cast from Clutterbug. She said, if everything is special and nothing is special. So this really helps us to kind of decide what we really want to keep and 
only allow what fits in that box. Next is short term. So short term might be things that you need for tax time, things that you don't need to keep for a really long time or forever, but that you do need to keep at least for a little while, like I said, taxes and things like that would be perfect to put in this category, but not things that you wanna archive forever. And then naturally the next is long term. So that would be things like marriage certificates, um, military papers, certain medical documents, um, educational records, things like that, that you're going to actually need to keep forever. And this is where having maybe like a filing cabinet or something like that might be great for you. We actually just keep a little safe and we just put all of those things in that little safe. Um, but a filing cabinet would be great if you have a lot more things that you need to store, especially if you have your own business and you're needing to store tax records for several years and things like that then this would be picked for a long-term system. And then finally is toss. So for us, toss usually means shred. Um, we have like a little inexpensive shredder that we got on Amazon. I can link it below. It's nothing fancy at all. You could also just tear it up with your hands if you wanted to, but we've just found that to be really convenient and fast. And so if we have any sensitive information, we just toss it in the shredder. All right, so this is my husband, Jerry, and for this portion of the video, we are going to be sorting through some of his paper clutter using these six categories that you can see here in front of him. And how long have you had this paper, honey? Probably years. Like at least since we've been married. So at least the past three years, this paper's been sitting there. So let's go ahead and see what we have and see if we can fit it into these categories. So just kind of walk us through what you're picking up and where you think it should go. Well, this first thing I have is old receipts. So that's definitely gonna go in the toss category. Okay. And so toss could be like shred, recycle, or throw away. So we're just keeping it as just toss though for our purposes. Next ones I have here are old check stubs. Um, so I'm going to put those in the short term category just for the meantime until we figure out when we want to get rid of those for sure. Okay. And then I have a card here that I need to transfer over and actually activate. Uh, so I'm going to put that in my action category because that's something I need to get to sooner than later. Yeah, perfect. There are some old study materials that I have uh, that kind of always end up in my paper clutter. So I'm going to put these in my memory category uh, and then find a proper place to put those when we get done here as well. Perfect. Um, and then we have some old college transcripts, um, which I can put into the long term category uh, just for references and certifications. And then we have some old documentation that I have from my time in the service and we will also be keeping on those for long-term purposes as well. This next thing I have here is uh, car information, application for titles, um, and things of that nature. So I'm going to put this in my long-term category um, so we can hang on to that until if and when we do decide to sell that car. And then at that point, we'll probably toss it and shred it and get rid of that. Okay. Next up, we have some old documentation from my time in the service again. And all of this stuff is really things that is unnecessary for me to hold on to. Um, and since it does have some sensitive information there, we're just going to make sure we shred that as well. Um, and then we have some historic tax documents that are from far enough in the past to where I don't really need to be hanging on these. So we're going to put that in the toss category as well. And then next I have a whole bunch of old medical documents. Uh, but some of these are still things that I can hold on to in case I need to reference them in the future. So I'm going to put these in the long-term category. And then after that, we have a whole bunch of old reference material from times in going through courses and classes. And all this stuff is unnecessary. So awesome. this can all just be tossed. Again, more service record stuff. So we can put that in a long term because I will need that. More old certifications from courses that are unnecessary now. And then 
copies of paperwork from previous things I've had to do that are, again, unnecessary. Put that in the toss file as well. Awesome. So in like just under five minutes, I think, we've already gone through that whole stack of paper. And now we'll just take these categories and take them where they go. So toss, we'll shred those things, file the long term, hang on to that short term. And then whatever action items he had, we'll go ahead and take care of those. And then the memory will go in his memory bin. And we'll talk more about those in another video. But that just goes to show how easy it can be to quickly sort through paper clutter with these really easy and simple categories. So thanks for helping out today and going through that with us, honey. And another thing that can be really easy to get hung up on is sentimental papers. Like I talked about before, maybe you have notes that are meaningful to you, maybe from like a Bible study or a conference you went to or something like that. And that's one of those items that you will just really need to evaluate if it's worth putting in your box, memory bin, or whatever you want to call it. Or if it's something that maybe you just needed in the moment to help you kind of remember by writing it down, but you're not honestly ever going to reference again. Other sentimental things like greeting cards and things like that. We actually have a specific box for cards that I keep and I just keep the really special ones with meaningful notes and things like that inside. And then if that gets full, then I kind of go back and reevaluate what I want to keep in there. But I do plan on doing an entire video about sentimental items later on, so we can kind of dive more into that a little bit later. But those are all of my tips for sorting, managing, and organizing paper clutter. I hope that you found them helpful. If you did, please be sure to give this video a thumbs up. And of course, if you have any tips of your own to share or any questions, I would love to hear from you in the comments. If you're not already subscribed, I hope that you will hit that subscribe button and notification bell so you don't miss the next video in this series. Next week we'll be diving into how to deal with sentimental items so I hope that you'll join me for that and as always thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time bye